Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So cloud architectural design is one key area, one key concept in the AWS cloud practitioner exam. And if you remember in the last video, we talked about the fault tolerance, we talked about the elasticity, but what about the redundancy? What about the uh, scalability of your application? So these are also very important concepts. And that is exactly what we are going to do in this video, my friends. We will talk about redundancy. We will also talk about scalability. We will take loads of questions around these concepts. Very important concept. Trust me, you're going to get some questions around these concepts definitely in the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam. And yes, throughout the video, I will share some really important documentation from AWS. And not only that, I will also give you explanation to the cloud concepts in my own word. I have compiled some examples, some analogies that will really help you understand all the cloud concepts in a very easy language. So let's head on to the very first question for today. So let's begin the part 32 with question number 236. And before I start this question, I really want to remind you, my friends, that please do not miss to watch the previous section or previous episode of this category. Starting from the part 31, the previous episode, I changed the approach a little bit. In addition to showing you the AWS official documentation with every question, now I have tweaked the approach that I will also explain each of these concepts in my own words. And all these explanations that I give in my own words will also be supported with some examples wherever it is possible. So let's begin this episode, question number 230. It says, which cloud architecture design principle involves distributing application components across multiple geographic regions or availability zones? Your options are option A, scalability, option B, high availability, option C, redundancy, and option D, disaster recovery. And the correct answer for the same is option C, redundancy. And friends, on this documentation, you can understand the official definition of redundancy from the AWS. So here it says, when a workload utilizes multiple independent and redundant subsystems, it can achieve a higher level of theoretical availability by using a single subsystem. For example, consider a workload composed of two identical subsystems. Now this can be completely operational. Either subsystem one or subsystem two is operational. So let me explain this concept more in my own words. To begin with redundancy in the cloud computing, it doesn't matter you're talking about AWS or Microsoft Azure or Google GCP. Redundancy is a practice of duplicating critical components or the functions of a system or application to enhance its reliability and availability. So essentially, it's about creating the backups or the duplicates to ensure uninterrupted service even if one part of the application fails down. And why this concept is so important? Because this ensures high availability of your application, data protection and business continuity. So redundancy can be implemented at various level. First of all, we have hardware redundancy. So in this kind of redundancy, you duplicate the physical components like servers, storage devices and network equipments. And then we have software redundancy. In this kind of redundancy, you have multiple copies of software and application running simultaneously. And then we have data redundancy. And in this one, we create multiple copies of data and storing them in different locations. So those were the high three levels of redundancy that you can achieve. Now let me talk about what are the types of redundancy. First of all, you have geographic redundancy. Secondly, you have site redundancy. And thirdly, you have component redundancy. Now I'm just keeping all this very short in case some of you really want to understand any of these concepts in little more detail, then let me know in the comment section. Now, before we jump on to the next question, let me give you a very quick example of redundancy. So suppose you have an online store. So you have created an online application using cloud services and cloud component. Now, as a professional architect, you would always want to ensure uninterrupted service and that's why you might want to deploy multiple servers at different location. And also on a regular base, you want to back up the product data to multiple storage location and also have redundant network connections for failovers in case of network issues. So this is how my friends, you implement redundancy and achieve high availability. So I really hope my friends, you're going to love this new approach where I'm explaining all these concepts in my own words with my own examples. And now let's move on to the next question, question number 237 that says that which cloud architecture design principle focuses on efficiently handling increasing workloads by adding or removing resources in a linear manner. Your options are scalability, option B, high availability, option C, elasticity and option D, resilience. And the correct answer for the same is option A, scalability. So let's understand what exactly is scalability. 
So scalability is the architecture design principle that really focuses on the ability of the system to handle the increase or decrease in workloads by adding or removing the resources in a linear manner. So it really involves designing a system that can be easily scaled up or scaled down to accommodate the changes in the demand without impacting the performance of the application. And you know what friends, there are two types of scalability. The first one is horizontal scaling, which actually means adding more instances. And then we have second one vertical scaling. And that means increasing the capacity of the existing instances. And in case you really want to deep dive in the concept of scalability, this is the documentation. You can understand all that what I just said in little bit more detail with some diagrams. And also you can understand what is the vertical scaling, horizontal scaling, all given in this one compact documentation. And yes, please do not miss to watch the next episode as I'm going to take very important questions on VPN, VPCs and the related concepts. And with that, let's move on to the next question. Question number 238 that says which cloud architectural concept is supported by a system that can scale in terms of users, traffic and data quality without sacrificing performance. And your options are option A, think parallel, option B, implement elasticity, option C, decouple your components and option D, design for failure. And the correct answer for the same is option B, implement elasticity. Well, elasticity in general in the cloud computing refers to the ability of the cloud computing environment to quickly and automatically adjust its resource allocation based on the changing demand. The easiest way to think about the elasticity is just like a rubber band. So just like the rubber band, you can stretch the rubber band when you need it. And when you loosen it out, it again contracts back to its original shape. Talking about the characteristics of elasticity, first of all, we have dynamic scaling. We also have automation, then we have speed, and then we have cost efficiency. And how all these concepts work together? Well, first of all, we have monitoring. So the cloud platforms constantly monitor the resource utilization and performance metrics. Then we have triggering. So when the demand increases, the system automatically triggers a scaling event. Then we have provisioning and that means additional resources are allocated to handle the increased workloads. And then we have deprovisioning, which is of course the opposite of provisioning. So when the demand decreases, the unused resources are released to optimize the cost. So I hope you really understood the concept of elasticity and how to implement the same. What are the benefits and what are the characteristics? And with that, let's move on to the next question. Question number 239 that says, what is raised when a business deploys web servers across several AWS regions? Your options are option A, coupling, option B, availability, option C, security, and option D, durability. And the correct answer for the same is option B, availability. And as the name suggests, availability just means being available. So availability stands for the uptime and the durability normally used to state about the data. And since the question says about the web server and in the words of AWS, availability is both a commonly used metric to quantitatively measure resiliency as well as a target resiliency objective. And here you can also understand the formula for availability. And with that, let's move on to the next question 240 that says which AWS compliance program provides independent third-party validation of AWS security and compliance. Your options are option A, AWS Identity and Access Management, better known as IAM, option B, AWS Artifact, option C, AWS Key Management Service, and option D, AWS Cloud Trail. And the correct answer for the same is option B, AWS Artifact. So what exactly is AWS Artifact? Well, AWS Artifact is a compliance program provided by AWS, of course, that gives customers on-demand access to various compliance reports and documentation. And this also includes the documentation such as service organization control, which is also known as SOC, reports, payment card industry data security standard, which is also known as PCI DSS, and along with that, various other compliance related documents. So these reports, my friends, are generated by independent third party auditors and provided to the customers with the assurance that AWS will comply with security and compliance practices. And once again, links to all the documentation is given right there in the description box. And friends, in case you're looking for the PDF files on various certification such as Microsoft Azure AZ900, DP900, 
AI900 or DP203, AZ104, then please check out the community membership or also you can achieve the same with the join button. But in case you face some issues, let me know. You can email me at connectors at the rate the tech blackboard.com. So I hope you like the questions for today. In case you have some queries, in case you have some doubts on the questions, in case you have some counter view, you do not agree with some of the answers that I gave then please reach me out in the comment section. And yes, once again, I want to remind you, please do check out the next episode where I'm going to take very important questions on VPC and VPN, really important cloud concept. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.